Hey guys, it is Cheesy here, and today I am very excited to be bringing you another Battlefield 5 discussion video. So, along with Laser Gaming, who I've collaborated with before, and Sablasco, we've made a video discussing the new Battlefield 5 leak. Laser Gaming, Sablasco, and I are all Battlefield YouTubers, so make sure to subscribe to all three of us and check out our channels, our videos, for tons of Battlefield content. The uh, leak was initially from the Battlefield forum, so I recommend that you have the post open while watching the video, as I'll link it in the description. One more thing before I start, we ended up talking for about 20 minutes, and obviously this is only 10 minutes of our discussion. Um, I've edited some parts out throughout, so my apologies if the audio gets confusing, but it definitely shouldn't. So for more of the discussion, once again, make sure to check out um, Laser, Sablasco, and obviously subscribe to me. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys, enjoy the video, it's just a like live discussion that we had over Skype, so yeah guys, enjoy the video. So uh, I guess getting straight into it, um, basically one of the first things is it'll be revealed at EA Play. Um, this probably isn't too shocking um, considering that's like, you know, because EA Play seems, it's obviously by EA, so I wasn't really yeah. surprised by this, were you guys? I well, I mean, like, it's like one of those things, like, people get so excited over, like, you know, Call of Duty. Hey, guys, we just got, it's got announced that, you know, they're going to be showing some gameplay at, you know, E3. Woo, big whoop. Like, we, they do it every year. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, we knew that. So, you know, I, I, it's not really something big to go off of. Yeah, with this, I mean, like, once it got past GDC this year, where's when they, that's when they announced Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Yeah, I kind of just assumed that they were going to announce it at EA Play, and even if they weren't going to announce it, we kind of knew that we'd be be getting gameplay at EA Play, I, but for me personally, I hope that they announce it a bit before that, and then we get our first, like, full multiplayer gameplay at EA Play, but if this leak is credible, it won't be announced until then, and Hardline wasn't actually... Because Hardline was supposed to release in, like, November, mm -hmm. but then it got delayed, and it wasn't announced until E3, so... If they followed Hardline's path, which was the last Battlefield game, this would make sense. But uh, let's get into the DLC leak. So right. basically they had like a, it looks like a postcard kind of, or like an invitation, I guess, to maybe a reveal of Battlefield Five Eastern Front, which seems to be the first DLC coming in the game. And... From this name, people may have thought this was World War Two. I mean, I can just uh, tell by, like, the map. Yeah. Like, that's what they sound like. I'm like, okay, they got Rebel, they got Soviet. It kind of feels like some kind of World War Two. Like, I'm looking at the forum comments, and that's what some people are saying. I guess yeah. they really understand that it's not really what, you know, people are thinking that these names are called. Uh, yeah, and so what I was thinking, so it mentions the Pan-Asian Coalition, and I looked them up, and they are from uh, Battlefield 2140. Is it 42 or 43? 42. Yeah, 42. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're from, they're prim primarily from um, the future Battlefield universe. And so that got me thinking, and they were formed in 2020, and the War of 2020 was featured in Battlefield 4. And so this kind of eliminates, at least if this is credible, this kind of eliminates the possibility of World War II. Mm -hmm. And it mentions the Russians, and there was a Cold War in 2139 in the Battlefield universe. And I think that's probably my strongest bet to where the where the setting is going to be. So like twenty one thirty nine Russia Cold War, Pan Asian coalition, and like the U S and stuff. So I mean, like it could be. So it could be going to like the near future, like not all the way there, just so they can make people happy. I'm guessing. It's called Titan Assault, and they introduced a new game mode called Titan Conquest, which sounds a lot like twenty one forty two. But I don't think they'd go all the way there. Just simply because people don't necessarily want a full-on future game, like yeah. 2143 people didn't want, but they could kind of like move around that by just giving us a game around maybe 2100. Mm -hmm. That's a bit futuristic, but it's not all the way there quite yet. But it also seems like with each DLC, it seems like the DLCs have a story also. Like, if it's, you yeah, read... Same. Yeah, and that could be interesting. Like, I don't think they'd go for a full-on campaign but if they did go for a good campaign they could theoretically add in an extra campaign mission or two extra campaign missions with each DLC because the way they describe the DLCs it seems as if like they have a story to them yeah it feels like some kind of series like okay now they're moving up to you know the new territory whatever like that it's like 
it's kind of like, you know, it's like some show going on here. So, yeah, basically like a storyline, but multiplayer DLC-wise. Okay, so uh, one thing, it also mentions the Frostbite 3 engine, which, you know, just like the Frostbite engine, which was used in Battlefield 4, so despite what I said in my last video about, like, they hired a new combat gameplay desire, uh, mm -hmm. designer over at DICE, however, if they're using the same engine, um, I don't really know, like, it must not be that innovative then if they're using the same engine, so... I guess that kind of disproves what I said in my last video, and they're, I guess, yeah, they're using the same engine that they're doing in Battlefield 4. Well, I mean, I made a video, um, my last video that I made on my channel was about the graphics, and I got some really guy, I got some really good guy who commented on my video who, you know, is in contact with a lot of these people that do this stuff, uh, you know, that works for, um, you know, the Frostbite and all that stuff, and he told me that, that basically Battlefront was, like, uh, was a Frostbite 3.5 basically engine. It's still Frostbite 3, but then he told me that they're not using the Frostbite 3 name anymore. It's just going to be called Frostbite instead of like Frostbite 4, Frostbite 3.5, whatever they're going to do with that. So I don't understand with that. Maybe he's right about that. I can understand that because they do say Frostbite 3 here. Maybe they're just going to stick with just Frostbite 3 and just stick with that, but that's what he told me. Yeah, like... That, this is the Fallen Dragon, which is basically uh, the second Assault DLC from Battlefield 4, is kind of where this does seem to fall apart. Like, we were talking about this earlier, but they say Siege of Shanghai 2016, all these maps 2016, and they also said it's reimagined in the Frostbite 3 engine. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And there's yeah. also, like, this is just a very minor detail, but, like, they, like, theoretically isn't, oh, no, wait. Is Dice like who's develop? Is Dice Stockholm doing this or Dice LA? I think I think um, I'm pr I'm pretty sure it's like Stockholm. I don't know. I'm not, yeah, I'm not I don't. Sure. I'm pretty sure it is though. I think they started. I think okay. they're going with it. In the leak below, like um, that shows the EA Play and EA Access show floor level. Yep. It mm -hmm. doesn't show Battlefield Five. It just shows Battlefield Five Eastern Front. So I yeah. don't know if they mean yeah. for that to be the title of the game. Or, because that, that's just kind of confusing, because if they're just introducing Battlefield Five Eastern Front without the game, does that mean that they're going to announce the game before that? So, like, it says that this guy, Nicholas Feg Fegreus, is going to be speaking, and he is actually a guy at Dice Stockholm. I don't know, I felt like whoever did, if this is a fake, then someone did obviously do their research on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yeah. Well, I, wanna, I just want to point out something for people that might have missed it. This is really similar to Battlefield, you know, Battlefield 4, it, almost exactly if you just look at it. You know, yeah. you got the Fallen Dragon, which is, you know, all, old maps are, um, you know, putting in. And then if you look at, like, the fourth DLC, which is kind of similar to, like, Naval Strike or so, just somewhere around there, it, you can just tell that it's, you know, it's going to be kind of like Naval, you know, just Naval Strike, whatever. You can see a tiny assault. You got the tiny thing that we, you know, we had in there in Battlefield 4, and you got the map names Island. You got Fish Head, Operation Fish Head. So it's it's kind of sim. It's really similar in my opinion. Like I noticed this right away. Like I just looked at the names. I was like, wow, this feels like a Battlefield 4 DLC. Like it doesn't, you know, feel new. I don't know if they would go for the same route, like the same DLC style. But you know, that's just one thing I want to point out that could just, you know, just pull this whole thing apart. And the last one seems to like go completely different just called like independence day and it's all fought within the u.s which is how so we really see being that invaded before. yeah i know which is cool though it would be interesting to see like uh battles in los angeles and san francisco i think that'd be sick yeah of course yeah i mean like yeah. i think this does just still support the thing that this is kind of like a story dlc just carrying on like now it's so we're we must be losing then if they're going to be if they're going to be on you know our territory here yeah. you know Los Angeles and all that. I was wondering how can they really make a realistic battlefield that isn't like an arcade game with such a fut futuristic uh, setting? Like, would it really fulfill like the battlefield need if you have like guys floating with like jetpacks and stuff no, or something? No, no. Yeah, no. I don't. I that's like I just don't think they're going to put jetpacks in. <laughs> Just, just because, I mean, theoretically, we might have jetpacks then, but I mean, just because every single time somebody brings up a futuristic Battlefield game, people are like, I don't want jetpacks in Battlefield. So yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. I, do you guys have any other uh, have any other opinions? So basically, to wrap up what we all just said, 
Uh, the game will be set from either 2020 to 2140, and will feature the U.S. like defending themselves against the superior technology, like the techn technologically advanced Pan Asian Coalition. So, yeah, yeah, well, that's... sorry, just I mean, as you're wrapping up, just as you said that, if they are more technologically advanced, that could like bring up like vehicle specific, like vehicles that are only specific to certain factions, which could also oh, yeah. be interesting. Because if they have more technology, like, for example, the U.S. might not have, hover, like, well, they probably have hover tanks if it goes to 2100 or something, but they might not have all the technology that the Pan-Asian Coalition does. And it could be interesting to see how they would balance that out if one, like, side had specific vehicles. Because it's not just weapons, because they can pretty much put, like, a similar weapon on either side, but if it's just based on pure technology... Maybe the the U.S. tanks have more power because they didn't sacrifice power for like being able to move faster. But that could be an interesting realm that they could go. Now into. that kind of sounds like what you just said. There kind of sounds like Planet Side too. If you ever played that game, you know. Yeah, I've you played have, that a couple times. Yeah, that that that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, but yeah, I think yeah we should wrap this up. Yeah. Sorry, I just had to say that when you said that about the superior technology. Okay, so I guess that pretty much wraps it up. Um, so I guess uh, everybody, uh, well, thanks to everybody for doing this, and uh, make sure to check out our channels if you haven't already, and feel free to leave likes, comments, and um, subscriptions to all of our channels. So, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll all three see you later.